Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're talking about Hems and Hers Health's quarterly earnings report. And boy, is it a doozy. By the way, the stock is up 8.3% after hours. And Shamao says, by the way, she's here in the picture, also right here in the corner in the picture, in the camera. By the way, yeah, she says to like and subscribe. So what's going on? What is Hems and Hers Health? Hems and Hers Health is a telehealth company that provides um, stigmatized medicine. And this is what sort of differentiates them from the bigger players like Amazon and some of the other larger telehealth companies. So what do they do? You can lose weight, um, regrow hair, tank, tackle anxiety, get smooth skin, and a couple of sex related pills too. You know, the blue pill. Blue pill, blue pill, blue pill. So what's going on with Hims and Hers Health? So going into the earnings report, you can see that the most important metric for me, for them, is subscribers. As long as subscribers keeps growing exponentially, then the revenues will likewise grow exponentially as well. So that I think is the most important metric for this company. And as you, you can see, it's growing very, very well. And it's actually crossed 2 million in this quarterly earnings report. So this is a little bit out of date. So they're over 2 million now, which is a lot. So let's get into it. What's going on is this is their um, revenue growth over time. So you can see it went from 80% in 2020 to 82.77% in 2021 to 93.81%, 65.49% um, in 2023. So the growth has been slowing down, but is that about to change? Let's find out. Okay, so going back to the first quarter, so this is going back a couple quarters ago. In the first quarter of 2024, HIMS recorded $278 million in revenue. That was a growth of 46% year over year. In the second quarter, the next quarter after that, they reported $315 million in revenue, which was a 52% growth year over year. So they went from $278 million to $315 million. What did they do last quarter? Last quarter, they did $401.6 million for 77% growth year over year. So that growth is actually accelerating. So just look at it, 46% to 52% to 77%. By the way, ignore the net income. That's mostly due to a tax provision, so ignore that number. It's not going to last. It's Ignore it. <laughs> ignore it. However, Just EBITDA is up 317% year over year. It's a newly profitable company, as you can see here, um, or as you can see in one of these charts, this one. So yeah, Hems and Herself is a newly profitable company, but they're growing significantly. However, due to them being newly profitable, they're... Um, year-over-year -year growth for the bottom line is growing huge big league big league look at these huge numbers but yeah again the most important numbers are subscribers which they recorded 2 million in the last quarter up 44 percent year over year not only that the average monthly online revenue per average subscriber is now 67 dollars per user which is up 24 percent year over year Consider this like same store, same store sales in a um, retail chain. Just imagine same store sales increasing 24% 24, 24 year over year. Actually, even beyond that, imagine this being the average person's ticket at those stores. It is huge. So yeah, let's just go through the highlights. I'm not going to go through it in too deep of detail because I want to get you this video in high quality and just not keep it boring. Boring sucks. So yeah, so now a majority of their subscriber base is utilizing a personalized solution. Why is this important? Um, this is important because this is one of Hims and Hers Health's um, key arguments for um, them providing generics for GLP-1s. Because the thing is, GLP-1s will at some point in probably the near future become not, um, not in shortage. Um, they're going to become, you know, ample from the brand name manufacturers. And due to that shortage ending, Hims and Hers Health's argument is that they're going to be able to continue selling GLP-1s um, to their subscriber base 
because they're personalized medications. Um, that's their argument. The case will probably go to trial. Um, I do not know how that case will turn out, but that's, this is their argument. So yeah, just it's a huge number. The one thing I wish that we had that we had in the previous quarter was um, a split out of the non-GLP-1 business, which we don't currently have. Because last quarter, the non-GLP-1 business grew 46%, while the GLP-1 business, with that included, you know, grew 52%, you know, 6% boost from GLP-1s, but now they're not splitting it out. Probably, probably because GLP ones are a huge part of the business now. Uh, but yeah, they go through their pipeline system. And what else is important is there's actually a lot of stuff to, to talk about. Is this here the outlook? Okay, they boosted their outlook. They boosted the outlook. So let's go to also on this form, so we can go like for like. So the outlook went from oh also their estimate for this quarter was 375 to 380 million dollars. Again, that was the estimate last quarter for this quarter, and they pulled in over 400 million dollars. So they beat their estimate significantly. But yeah, for the full year outlook, um they they were expecting last quarter of 1.37 million dollars to 1.4 billion dollars, and then now they've raised it to 1.46 billion dollars to 1.465 billion dollars. So that went from a growth of 57 to 61% to a growth of 67 to 68%. So that growth is now re-accelerating from 65.49% to 67 to 68%. And not only that, their just EBITDA is the projected to be 173 to $178 million. That's a 12% margin. And they're projecting long-term that to increase to 20% adjusting bits of margins. So they are a growing company, they are a profitable company, and I think they're the only profitable telehealth company on a gap basis. But yeah, you can see the subscriber base here, but look at that revenue. Um, now, keep in mind, this revenue number is, um, wow, that's all I have to say about this one. It's insane. This is an insane revenue number, just quarter over quarter, and then also year over year. I mean, it was like clockwork, just gradually increasing exponentially, then just boom. This last quarter was just the GLP-1, boom. It's insane. Um, you can see here, okay, the reason why the margins declined a little bit is because um, BPI Labs actually produces um, Hims and Herself's GLP-1 medication. Um, so they have to split the revenues with them or yeah, they have to split the revenues with them and also the profits. So right now it's sort of split, but Hampson Hurst Health did purchase a, um, 503, 503, I think it's a 503B compounding facility, um, from Metasource RX. So they can produce these GLP-1 medications themselves without having to rely on a third party provider. So that's great news there. And this is also a really awesome chart. So what this is, is this is as a percent of revenue, basically how efficient the company is, re is running year over year. So example, marketing last year was 50%, 51% of revenue. This year, it's 45%. And um, this includes um, this includes stock-based compensation. And then yeah, you can see operating Operations went from 14% to 12%. Technology went from 6% to 5%. And general administrative went from 16% to 11%. So yeah, the, that, the lower those numbers are, the better. Because that's their operating expenses as a percent of revenue. So that is amazing. Um, ignore this number. This number is fake. It's not fake. It's just not going to last. Uh, what else is important? Let's skip down, skip down, skip down, skip down, skip down. Okay, so what happens here? What's going on is um, let's skip their balance sheet right now. Um, I just want to go over what's going on here. So 51.8, 51. Point, sorry, 75.6 million dollars in net income, but uh, 51.995 million dollars that was a tax provision. So ignore that. Um, that's just a one-time tax provision. It's not going to continue. Um, however, if you actually ignore that out, 
bring out our trusty little calculator, um, Hims produced a net income of $23.6 million. That's from that's up from a negative $7.5 million last year. So that is a significant net income for this company. And it's a huge net income increase versus even the prior quarter. I mean, the prior quarter they were at, sorry for all the scrolling. <laughs> it's just hard to find these things sometimes. So yeah, $13.3 million to $23.6 million. That is up significantly quarter over, that, that's quarter over quarter, quarter over quarter. So this is, so, okay, so what happens, what's happening is Hims is executing on all cylinders, but that one cylinder primarily is GLP-1s. There's one more thing I want to talk about, then I'll let you go. <laughs> the one, last thing I want to talk about is GLP-1, here, lyric glutide. So Hims's GLP-1s currently are semi-glutide. That's what's being produced by BLP-1s. Now, what Hims is now saying is they're going to be doing a generically available GLP ones. So this will also hopefully keep them in the GLP one market because this is a money maker, especially for Hims with such a small market cap to be producing this kind of growth at this kind of net income. They are a significantly cheap company in my opinion. So yeah, it says we are excited to bring access to Lyric Glutide to our customers in 2025. The first generic GLP-1 available on our platform. We have already confirmed a core supplier for this edition over an, and over the next few months expect to finish completing test and batch validation as well as confirming certificates of authenticity. So the, what they're doing is they're hedging their bets. So if semiglutide gets blocked, then they can do this lyriglutide or maybe something else. And it's not just GLP-1s. Hims also does all those other medications. Um, they do all these other um, segments of this system. So it's not just a GLP-1 business. Remember, last quarter, the non-GLP-1 business grew 46% year over year. So even if GLP-1s went to zero, Hims is still a significantly growing and significantly profitable company. And yeah, they are firing at all cylinders. This is an awesome report. And guess what? I even Googled, <laughs> or binged in this case, Lyric Glutide for you. And it says, Lyric Glutide is available under the brand name Victoza, and there's currently no generic version. However, Teva Pharmaceuticals has launched an authorized gener generic version of Victoza in the US, which is labeled as Lyric Glutide and is exactly the same as Victoza. Victoza. So yeah, that's it for me. Um, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.